Well, good morning. My name is Francesco Montorsi. I am a, a urologist in Milano. I lead uh, the unit of urology at uh, University Vita Salute San Raffaele. I am one of the executive committee members of uh, the EAU and I have been involved in the organization of the scientific program of uh, the genito-urinary ASCO, the meeting in San Francisco where we are today. The topic of the whole session was, uh, as said, uh, oligometastatic prostate cancer, which means the disease uh, where at the time of the first uh, diagnosis, so the presentation to the doctor, the patient comes in having uh, not only the disease within the prostate, but also some localizations at a distance. Uh, oligometastatic means that they should not be more than five, and typically we are talking about uh, metastasis uh, within the lymph nodes or uh, in the bone. Uh, the, the session started with the, this abstract that uh, did talk about uh, choline PET, uh, which is one of uh, the tests uh, that we have been using uh, most frequently over the last uh, five to ten years. And it did show that if you use PET, uh, you are able to see what is the degree of the disease in the patient in a better way as compared to conventional imaging. One should also say that uh, there are a number of different tracers that today are used for PET and we all realize that uh, we are using uh, already newer tracers compared to choline, especially PSMA, which is available now almost uh, everywhere in the world. But uh, the important take home message is that uh, in some of the patients with oligometastatic disease, this type of uh, evaluation uh, is important. Regarding the, the session, it was based, uh, it was a two more board session, which means uh, that a number of different specialists did participate. And typically, these are the specialists to deal with these patients, not only the urologist, which means the surgeons, but also radiation oncologist and the medical oncologist. And we did develop a real case that we did see in Milano in 2015 of uh, a young person who came in with bad disease to start with. And so we did discuss uh, during the session how to approach the patient initially, which means when the patient comes to see you, you need to understand what is the diagnosis. And so if there is a suspicious suspicion of prostate cancer, what are the tests that should be done? And we did discuss, for example, the various forms uh, to perform a biopsy in the prostate, uh, which is a hot topic today. Prior to the biopsy, we did discuss uh, the role of MRI, which is becoming more and more significant, and especially the key data coming from uh, three randomized trials that have uh, clearly shown that MRI should be done whenever a clinical suspicion of prostate cancer is present before the biopsy uh, were discussed. And then uh, we discussed the way to stage the patient, which means uh, how can we define what is the real extension of uh, the disease and where are the localization of the diseases. And this is important because you need to decide what is the management strategy starting from there. And following uh, the case study, we did discuss the role of surgery in prostate cancer, which remains an important role in many of our patients. The role of radiation therapy which clearly can be used at the very initial stage as a radical therapy to cure cancer, but also it can be used, and it is important, when the patient needs uh, the so-called multimodal approach, which means that in order to face the problem, if uh, this is very significant, then you need to use more than one thing. And the patient uh, that we did discuss uh, during the session did receive surgery initially, and then he received radiation therapy to support the role of surgery. And uh, following the course of the case, as the disease unfortunately did continue to come back because it was a very bad cancer to start with, we then discussed the role of drugs, the, the role of hormonal therapy, which is important. And uh, during this meeting, it has become very clear that uh, the classic hormonal therapy will be supported, uh, or it is already supported, but will be even more supported in the future with newer drugs that have recently been approved. 
So the role of medical therapy was discussed, uh, the role of very specific uh, radiation therapy, and I am referring to stereotactic uh, uh, radiation uh, to uh, a single um, targets uh, that can be killed uh, by this very specific uh, form of uh, radiation were discussed. And uh, the, the session was concluded uh, by uh, Dr. Morris from Memorial uh, Sloan Kettering, my co-chair, who did uh, a final uh, evaluation of what uh, we can use today to treat these patients. In essence, uh, there are uh, many new drugs available and uh, the role of uh, genetics and genomics have become at this meeting so clear. Uh, so there, we are at the initial steps in that area, but indeed there will be a significant uh, development in the near future. So overall, uh, it was clearly described that uh, patients also with significant disease can find a solution for the problem. They should see their doctor and they should be treated with a multi-board uh, um, with a multi-board um, system, which means many different specialists working together.